Ramon came over to help Andre in the Worlds in 2008, Ramon came over. So it was like, he stayed, helped Andre. I was training with him. I was driving to San Diego because that's where Andre was. And um, Kevin Howell, as, as everybody yep. knows, and another amazing guy. Yep. We were training with them constantly because that's when Andre was doing the book. And um, one thing led to another. It was like, hey, Jay, uh, we don't have a school here. So you're going to need to move to Brazil if you want to keep training with Hamon. Because hmm. Hamon lives in Brazil and it's in a very small city. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Uh, Brazil, beautiful, you know, the women, the this, everything that you talk about, Acai, but Rio Claro is not that. <laughs> <laughs> I went far from the beach. I'll never forget it. Hamon was like, Jason, get ready, like really get in shape because you have no idea, like, what you, you have no idea. Okay, whatever, whatever, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Fly to Sao Paulo. We get in the bus. I have a big bag. And we're in a bus from Sao Paulo, three and a half hours northeast into Rio Claro. Rio Claro. Get off the bus, go to the house, small home, drop my bag straight to the academy. And, man, it was tiny. And it was hot. And everybody on that map was really good. <laughs> everybody there was yeah. a world champion. In, in every belt that they, in whatever belt they were, every single person had won the world at a belt level there, except myself. Even the blue belts, I remember I remember at that time, sorry to cut you off, but like guys like Ronaldo, Congito, uh, Denilson, Beliscari, um, you know, a lot of new up and comers, you know, that, that, that place. From what I saw, you know, the, the brick wall, the small, you know, mat um, was just a room full of killers. And, you know, one of our mutual friends, uh, Gilbert Dorino, was telling me a lot about the training there recently on the, this podcast. And obviously, Hoffa and Guy told me a lot. But uh, what, what did you find was the, 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 one of the biggest differences in the training, um, despite from the technical level? What was it that they were doing that – um, that you just didn't see in, in America at the time? Man, for me, it was the camaraderie of the team, you know, and, and, the, and the dedication of there wasn't outside influences. Like, there was nothing like, oh, let's go to the beach and skip training or let's mm. go get some food and skip training. There was none of that there. So uh, you had Hamon Lemos, who um, for me is like... You Genius. Know, it's the guy yeah. is just not only is he that good in jujitsu himself, but he he was coaching but not training. So the difference in America is most of the guys that when they come to America, they're still training to keep their dreams of being world champions, and so they're training themselves, also trying to train a team. Hamon didn't train; he he literally would coach and dissect and and stop you in the middle of the training to fix this script. This script's bad for you. Do this. Stop here. Do this. Do this. No, you're not doing this. This is how you train. We had, like, the training schedule was, man, first the mats were, like, grounded up tires with a tarp and holes in them. It hurt. It, the walls, you didn't stop. Like, the wall was just, man, hit the brick and keep going. Yeah. You know? So... We'd get there at nine in the morning, two hour training. So first thing he would go over three positions, we would drill those three positions. So we'd probably drill them between just, you're just getting the motion down, getting it timed, then speed drills in, and then doing it specific training. Probably first morning would be 20 times each side, 20 times each side, so that's 80, 20 times each side, 120. So about 160 to 180 repetitions for mm. training of three techniques that were the concept of, you know, what jujitsu, you know, it was like uh, if we were passing the guard or the guard, it was, okay, this is the beginning and this is where it leads. If he adjusts, this is where you adjust. If he adjusts, this is where you do. And it just kept going. Mm -hmm. So 9 to 11, we would do drills and then train. 11 to 12, uh, Hafeng Gi's cousin, Tiago Mendez, amazing guy, went and learned uh, 
physical training and everything and, and had everything inside the academy to do our circuits. So right after hard training, straight to physical training. <laughs> no more training back then, you know. Straight after that, we would go eat, come back for 3 o'clock. Same drills at 9 happened at 3. Same repetition. So now we've done another 160 to 180 reps of the of, – so now we're way past 400 reps of what the position yep. is. And the training wasn't as hard. Hamon would pick the training to where, okay, More. now you can only train – this many like less less time and black belts couldn't train with black belts so it was more like just attack 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 right um and then the rest of us you know i wasn't black belt at the time i was brown so it was still like i would train with everyone um and then you'd go home eat sleep for an hour and come back at eight o'clock eight to ten o'clock same position we did nine uh, three and now again and then the students would come in. So it wasn't the team, the competition team, really. It was more like the people from work. And, but they were training the same. Like, they were, they were monsters. Like, there was guys in there that, were, that never trained. Yep. Man, they were, they were good. Um, and then we would do that Monday through Friday. Saturday, we'd wake up. We'd go to, we'd go to the academy, and we would run. And then after we'd run, we'd all just sit in the academy, and that's where Wi-Fi was. So everybody would sit around and get on Facebook and you know, start doing their thing. And then uh, Sunday was wake up, church, uh, barbecue. Nice. And then repeat. Repeat Again. the whole week. Yes. Yeah. And, and you know, you you one of the things you said was the speed drills uh, and just the drilling and the repetition of the of the techniques. That was something I know for for our end. Um, you know, you and I were kind of chatting beforehand and I, I felt like, um, learning from guys like Hafan Gi, you know, our, our academy is affiliated with Hafan Gi and just being able to drill so much. We never, my friend, uh, who owns the academy, PJ O'Sullivan and I, like where we trained before, we never understood the importance of drilling. We never really, we, we, we kind of saw it as a hassle, but we never saw the benefits because nobody had really taken the time to um, really demonstrate that to us. You know, we saw a lot of technical jujitsu and a lot of beautiful jujitsu that was that we learned from seminars and people coming to teach us. But as far as the drilling methodology, the speed drills, I still remember Guy, you know, yelling at us. He's like, "Drills, but fast. Drills, but fast." You know what I mean? Like, just constantly, like, just and it's like you cannot stop you know and then it just you develop the speed and fluidity in your passing that i you know i i just it's amazing like i feel like there was like you know i feel like in myself there was like different levels and um it's like when i started jujitsu um then when i first started training you know kind of regularly with a black belt and then it was the Hafan Gi era, and then it's just been that era since then, you know, understanding. Yeah, I the same. I thought I knew jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Now I went to Hill Club. And, yeah. And again, it's like the same, you know, the guys like Gi and Hoffa the, in, in Hamon, you know, and I like to say this because, again, my experience there was even with the drills, Hamon was fixing your, man, you're doing the drill wrong. You have to do it right. It has to be like this. You have to move your foot, your hand right here every single time and do it very fast. So that it's perfect and perfection constantly, mm -hmm. and and you can see it in Guy and Hoffa. You can see, especially Guy. Guy is a Guy is precise. Like yeah, he is a precision person. Hoffa is more, you know, Hoffa plays more, but Guy is just like perfect. Um, yeah. But then Guy also gives that information for Hoffa, so it's like a, you know, a lot of people don't give the credit. I think where yes, Guy is a four-time world champion. But he is also a genius. Like he's, he yeah. studies. Like man, even Hill Clara, we would train. He would go home and watch everybody's matches, and wow. come back and be like, "So and so does this. This is what I will do." And man, I'm not gonna sit here forever and talk stories about how I feel like those guys were so good. Is because after a training, because everybody there is at the highest level. Everybody was there. Like I said, everybody. Danielson, blue belt, man. He gave Hoffa a good time at Blue Belt then. Yeah. Yeah. Like my first training ever in Brazil was Danilson. He killed me. 
I didn't even know what to think. I'm like, man, brown, blue belt, not whatever. I'm just, oh. <laughs> little guy oh, too. They not, they laughed. They yeah, just not laughed. A, They're like, welcome. Yeah. And then I was, that was that's when I was like, oh man, I kind of want to go home. Like, this is for real. Like, I don't, I don't know. This was like, this isn't what I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> um, but after the trainings, people, everyone would sit around together as a group. And I mean, I'm like, Gilbert Burns, Bruno Frazado. Hafa, Guy, Durinho, Calasanz, Guto Campos, Denilson, Rojadino, uh, Tiago Mendez, and then um, Eduardo is their other cousin. He's amazing at jiu-jitsu. He just never came to compete, but man, the guy is phenomenal in jiu-jitsu, Hafa Guy's cousin. Uh, and then you had um, Sigunch, and if I'm forgetting somebody's name, I apologize. You know, uh, Orlando Zanetch was there at the time, where a lot of people don't know who Orlando is. But they would talk. And, hey, man, how'd you do that? How'd you do this? How'd this? Boom, 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 boom. Next thing you know, there's another drilling session after training to fix one position that Gilbert and Hoffa did. So mm -hmm. now all the black belts are there. With us, we just sat there and kind of listened. You know, we didn't really have much to say, if I'm honest. But we'd listen, and it would just be like, oh. Then it would flourish into this position. Yeah. Next training, they're drilling that. Like, that position yeah like crazy and and then it evolves again and it evolves again and then 50 50 came up and then uh, an arm bar came up for gilbert and man like so many things just started to to pop up yeah you know and that's what that's what i feel was different is is the the way the it's such a small place and like Gilbert and Bruno lived in an apartment that was the size of this office, but I'm talking, that's the kitchen, the shower, the bathroom, the living. It's just like, this is, this is what they lived in. It was not good. Half and Guy, tiny house right next to the academy. You know, I lived with Hamon, small house, Hamon and his wife. So luckily for me, I got to live with Hamon every day. I woke, ate breakfast, night, so I learned just over dinner, we'd be talking. And, um, so nobody had like this amazing life. It was it was home to eat and the academy was life. Yeah. Jiu Jitsu was the life for them. You know, for me it's a little different. Yeah. I was older, obviously. You know, I wasn't I wasn't competing at the level that they were, you know. So um you can see why now. You can see like their fruits and, and everybody that came out of there, everybody that came out of Hill Claro has accomplished something. Yep. 